All right, signals. They're actually known in the computer science world as the observer design pattern. Now, signals built into Godot is very specific, but it's still a riff off the observer design pattern, which is the idea that you have a subject, which is the thing you care about, and you have observers that are watching the thing that you care about. And then when the subject changes something, uh, whether it's in the game design world picking up keys or doing events that you want them to watch, they're listening to be aware of those changes. Uh, let's take a, a more detailed example. Say you have in-game a radio and it's tuned to channel 21. Listening on a transmitter that is also broadcasting on, on signal 21. In this case, you're trying to have potentially players or a group listening for something, uh, whether it's the enemy or their allies or waiting for some kind of information to come through, or you're trying to create clues in a game and you're changing channel and you're trying to pick up that, that clue. Uh, in this case, in this case, the subject is the transmitter and the radios are the observer. Now, when it's transmitting, those that are listening on that proper channel, they're connected to that, allows them to actually receive those events going through. And then whether it's information, clues, or ways in which you want to progress your game, you can have them listen. But this way, they're not tied together and directly uh, tied to each other in a way that uh, creates a lot of dependencies and issues. This way, it's a very simple way of understanding signals, and Godot does this in the same manner. It's just a little bit more user-friendly, whereas you normally have to code all this yourself. Now that we've gone through the theoretical, let's actually apply some of this. I have set up a scene with a bunch of stuff already added to it. What we want to accomplish is simple. We want to make this character run over and spring the trap. Uh, then we want to go over, pick up the key, and have it unlock the door. Then, we're going to come over here and have the player attack and kill all these slimes. And finally, have that the slimes being done trigger this door to unlock. And finally, going over to the game over. To start off, we'll run this guy. And you'll notice that he can, you can already move with WASD and mouse button to attack. But here... Nothing's happening, and, and we can't get past the door. We want to look at this spike trap, and we don't see this being available, so we actually need to open the spike trap scene. And I already have this area 2D set up, and so what we want to do is say on area 2D enter on body entered because we want it to register the player. Which is here, it says when a physics body 2D enters this area. In this case, our player being a kinematic 2D object is what we want. So we will double click on this guy and say, hey, spike trap, let's connect. This is how we do the signal uh, connection. It's very simple, you can double click, do it from the UI. Just say on area 2D body entered, connect, make sure, and then it looks for a script. So you need to have a script already set up, which I set it up on the main uh, top level object. Click connect, and now it's connected. In here, get rid of this and we can say print uh, triggered the trap. Save that. And now let's go ahead and run this. Come on over here. Notice down here that we have triggered the trap. Now, that's all nice and good, but I already have an animation set up here. So all we have to do is replace this statement with animation, which is already connected up here, dot play the default. And we'll run it again. Come on over here. 
and bam, look at that. A lovely signal created. Congratulations, you've just now mastered the basics of signals. Uh, but let's move on to something a little more tricky. Let's try to pick up this key and have it open up the store. Well, to do that, let's jump over to the key.tscn file, open up the script, and see that it's empty. Not only can you create signals from the UI here, but if we want to do something custom that's not listed here, you could do it in code very simply. So this case, like we were talking about earlier, there's a broadcaster and a receiver, the subject and observer. So in this case, the subject is the key. And the thing we want to broadcast, that whole line, is, is the signal of the event. So it's very simply, just type in signal on key pickup. And if you save it, you'll then notice if you go over and click on key now and look at node, notice that, hey, key has on key pickup. And so from this point, you could double click and set it up. You don't want to do that here because there's no references to player or the world. So really, we just want it to, to shout out and say, hey, I've been, I've been picked up. And to do that, we go right back to basics like we did with the, with the trap. We go back to this area 2D, we say, hey, if, if any person, any body comes by and picks up this key on body entered, then I want to let everybody know. So when any body clicks this, we'll do this just like we did with the trap. And now we have on body entered. When somebody hits the key, all we want to say now is transmit the statement that, hey, the key's been picked up. And so we'll go and say emit signal on key pickup. Now, we also want to get rid of the key because once you picked it up, we don't want it to be there anymore. And that's really easy. easy. We just go self.q3. And that's it. Let's go run it. All right, now we run over here. We'll trigger the trap for fun. Click on the key, hey, it's gone. But nothing happened. Well, that's because we've only completed one half of this. We have the broadcast saying, hey, key's been picked up, but nothing has been up, set up to listen and say, hey, yes, I know the key has been picked up. I'm going to open the door. Let's go do that right now. All we have to do is pop on over to our level. Oh, our level here. And I have in this top level root a script. Uh, most games have managers that kind of looking at the state of the game and figuring out, hey, did something happen? You know, did you kill the thing? Do I need to progress to the next level? Do I need to load something? Just basically watching what's happening. In this case, I want the level to know that the key was picked up to open the door. Now you can add additional things like wait for the player to be next to the door. But in this case, we're just going to have it open immediately. Uh, we're going to take this ready method and we're going to, oh, also, quick note, I'm actually linking to that non-existent key anymore. Uh, I want it, it should know it exists and we should connect to listen to it before it goes away. Because once you do the self.q, it's gone and you can't connect to it after the fact. But we can still listen to the event. So on ready, we're going to say, hey, that key, that's, oops, if I spell it correctly, that key that's over there, let's connect to it. And we know it is on key pickup. Uh, I want the level to be the one to receive the message, so self. And then we're going to make the method on key picked up. Now it's red because this method doesn't yet exist. So we're going to come right down here and say function on key picked up. And now this one should become happy, and it did. But this one's like, hey, now what? Well, once it's picked up, we want to unlock the door. We come over here, we have our reference to our door. Hey, door. 
unlock door. Oh, yes. Uh, remember to wrap the method in a string. Because it can be anything you enter, it's trying to figure it out, but it happens at runtime and cannot be compiled. So if you uh, add something like this, it's not going to tell you it's wrong because it doesn't know during until runtime. So always good to make sure that's like that. And let's run it. So we've got our character. We're going to trigger that trap. We're going to pick up the key and look at that. The door is now unlocked. Now we're going to run up here. And now we've got some slimes, but nothing's happening. Well, how do we get past it? Well, let's make it where we kill each of these slimes and then it triggers makes it, it's a trigger that says, oh, all the slimes are dead. Let's open this string, this door. As you can see, I've already started a lot of this work for you. I'm getting to see if those three, three slimes exist. Very simply saying, if the slimes are gone, unlock the door. So in this case, the level really doesn't have to do anything other than it's continually checking in this process if they're alive, if that nodes are still there. If they are all three null, hey, that means you killed them all and that's the condition to get through the end. But it doesn't need to know everything other than the state. Because in this case, it's the player versus the slime. So let's open up the player.tcn file. And yes, there's a lot of code in here, but it's, it's relatively simple. Um, it's really just animation set up for attacking, uh, running around, which I've covered in previous videos. And that's about it. There's nothing beyond that other than checking to see if there's an enemy to kill it, which right now it's null. Nothing's happening. What we want to do here is say, hey, I've got this attack zone. And that means anything that's in this field while I am attacking will die. Now, this isn't perfect. Um, you'd want it to be smart enough to know that if these enemies behind him and he's not flipped that way, that this wouldn't work. You may even want to put the attack zone as a child of the main sprite, but this is just simple stuff here. We want to take the attack zone and like we did with the trap, we just want to say, okay, I want to know when a slime body has entered. And I'm going to connect it to my player script. And then it's there. And then again, we want to know if it's a slime and not say like an ally, like maybe you have a, someone you're escorting or a good character or vendor or shopkeeper. So instead we just say if the slime is in the body.name, then our enemy equals body. Now you could do this more complicated. You can set it up to say, maybe you have a type system and category and say, hey, if this body is of this type, then it's an enemy and make sure that that sets that, that that's the one we have targeted. Because that, that's all that variable is doing is being our target. After that, we just basically attack and it will kill it right here. The, the safe thing to do is to also take into account when they are no longer in your uh, zone. So you can go back to this attack to zone and when the body is exited, reconnect as well and say, hey, they're no longer in my target zone. I can't bring them in, run away and do an attack and still kill them. Let me show you what this does if we don't add this. All right. So now I come over here, right? I come over to this dude and I'm like, oh, cool. And then I'm going to run away and I'm going to attack. No, he's died. That makes no sense in a game. So we got to make sure to account for when we leave the area. We just come into here and say, when we're no longer in the attack range, the enemy is no. So now they have to be within the range for it to work. Go ahead and try that again. Okay, let's kill all these slimes. Yeah. And of course you can make this much easier and have the collisions be more accurate. And now notice because that level was taken into account to check when all three slimes were there or not, it opened the door. And now there's nothing here. Well, how do we end the game? Just like we started it. 
come on over here, go to our level, scroll down to game over, look for game over, body entered, click on the level, we come on over here to if player in body.name, get tree, change scene to game over. Okay, let's test this again. And here we go. Congratulations. I hope after this you now have a great understanding of signals and can integrate them into your game with better knowledge and specific goals in mind. Again, if you could like and subscribe to appease the algorithm and so you can be aware of new content, that would be great. Alright, well thank you so much. Stay safe. Stay awesome. Ciao.